This video is sponsored by Enlisted. Insomniac Spider-Man 2 has just been released and it features web swinging, wingsuit flying, surfing, bicycling, and more. Ten months ago, I made a video about the issues with the swinging physics in Insomniac Spider-Man 1. And it seemed like many viewers in the comments agreed with the problems that I highlighted. I ended that video with the hope that Spider-Man 2 would fix those issues and deliver a brand new swinging experience, be it in the form of a separate advanced swing mode or by just entirely replacing the original mechanic altogether. Now that Spider-Man 2 has been released, it's official. They basically just copy and pasted the swinging physics. Nice. They did, however, include an option to disable the invisible barriers and some protections that altered the swinging physics. While it's great that they added that, it's not really anything near what I was hoping for. The game's swinging is great and a lot of fun as an arcade swinger. It's perfectly executed for an arcade-style swinging system. Little kids will pick it up very easily as it practically swings itself for you. IGN, GameSpot, and other similar reviewers will enjoy the swinging and give it raving reviews. They'll say it really makes you feel like Spider-Man but I'd argue that it makes you look like Spider-Man. It doesn't make you feel like you really did anything you're seeing on screen. In fact, if you try to do things that go against what kind of automatically happens, you'll realize that you actually don't have much control at all over what he does. The casual player who just wants sleek looking swinging where you don't have to think too much will love this. But the player that's looking for a challenge and would have a lot of fun trying to avoid obstacles and navigating difficult environments will not get as much out of these physics. If it were between getting the map expansion we got here or getting a more realistic and challenging swinging option, I would have chosen the swinging option. The new area on the map isn't really that great for swinging gameplay anyways. In this video, we'll cover the issues with Insomniac's need to hold your hand too much. We'll break down the bad swinging physics issues that plagued the game. We'll compare this 2023 AAA Spider-Man game with Spider-Man games from decades ago. We'll talk about the problematic wingsuit, the swing speed upgrade, the assist settings, wall crawling, and we'll also talk about some features that would have been cool to have seen. I don't want this video to seem like I don't like this game. I loved this game. It had a great story. It expanded the map nicely. The symbiote story was handled well, but after 100%ing this game, I honestly feel that it could have been better. It didn't take any massive steps forward. If anything, it felt like they took some small steps back, like with the combat, enemies, gadgets, and a few other things. It was a great game but it wasn't spectacular. This video isn't about all of that. It's simply about the swinging physics and the traversal physics in general. Insomniac gets it. They really do. They understand Spider-Man. They understand Spider-Man fans, but at the same time, they don't get it. They're playing it safe. Here's how. Before we begin, I want to talk about the sponsor that enabled me to spend the time to make this video, Enlisted. Enlisted is a unique first-person shooter that combines both PvP and PvE combat. Join the gritty ground battles and test your tactics and strategy on the front lines. Enlisted delivers an action-packed experience to infantry troops in a whole new way. In Enlisted, you take command of a squad of customizable AI soldiers and fight in massive battles with hundreds of targets that are led by other players. The game offers multiple campaigns to play through, each featuring their own unique weapons, vehicles and equipment from the outskirts of Moscow in 1941 to the heart of Berlin in 1945. Each of these campaigns and Enlisted are so diverse that they each feel more like individual games, as each one offers a completely new experience every time, with the battlefield appropriately set and filled with content true to their historical timeframes. What's most exciting is that with over 100 weapons, tanks, and aircraft, Enlisted introduces a wide array of infantry and vehicle warfare scenarios. Engage in battles across a variety of materials meticulously crafted environments, all with incredible detail and graphics. Navigate the challenges of intense PvP matches, all designed to cater to various play styles. Play Enlisted for free, now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. Register now using the link in my description to claim an exclusive bonus pack. This pack includes multiple weapons, soldiers, and premium account. Insomniac has a problem with their swinging. It holds your hand too much. It does all the work for you. This is great for mindless swinging, but this is awful if you're the type who enjoys a challenge. When racing games are fun, it's because they test your abilities and skill. They allow you to push the limits when drifting around corners, dodging cars, and timing your moves. They don't brake for you. They don't turn the steering wheel for you. Unfortunately, Insomniac Spider-Man 2 does. Instead of braking and steering the wheel for you, it forces you to let go of 
of your webs. It forces you to move in the direction they want you to when swinging. It fights you to keep you inside the air tunnels when you wingsuit, so much so that you can literally put the controller down and walk away and it will still guide you through all the turns, height shifts, and everything all the way until it ends. Automated traversal like this feels off-putting. It gets worse though. The biggest issue I had with Spider-Man 1's web swinging was how automated and cleaned up it felt. It was polished, but it was all for the looks. The animations immediately corrected any mistakes you made. The risk was non-existent because the game would forcibly maintain a buffer distance between you and other objects like buildings. It was like a kid mode. Kid mode. The web you were hanging from would essentially shorten and you'd stay hovering above any objects that were getting close below. Spider-Man 2 changes none of this. It's a little harder to replicate these issues now because the game pulls away nearly all control from you. When trying to prove these issues near the ground, Spider-Man will swing off in whatever direction you started your swing. No matter how hard you fight it or pull back, he will suddenly fly at max speed in the direction you were facing. Then if you try to turn around and go back toward the ground slowly, he'll just automatically let go of his web. Meaning it's extremely difficult to hang from a web near the ground now. It's doable, but it's difficult. Forcing you to let go of your web when the game decides it's time to is extremely annoying. It removes all control from you, and you have to go about it just right in order to get him to hang on to his web. For the most part, in almost every situation where you're trying to prove something like this, he will decide when it's time to let go of the web, not you. This should be what not to do when making a Spider-Man swinging game 101. And the fact that this ridiculous issue wasn't removed the second time around is a egregious and proves that Insomniac is not comfortable with letting us play with the swinging physics in our own way. It has to be protected because they know its limitations. They know it won't work out well if you let the player decide when to let go. This makes it so you can't do cool tricks like a loop on your own. In fact, I think that their swinging physics system doesn't allow for loops. This is why in Insomniac Spider-Man 2, you can only do one single loop and it has to be done in combination with the dive move right beforehand, essentially setting up the game mechanic to be played by pushing a button. Also, after the single loop completes, he automatically lets go of his web, even if you continue to hold the right trigger. Not to mention the fact that this is an unlockable skill, meaning you have to unlock it to make it possible. You can forget about trying to do a loop without diving and using the skill, because at the peak of the swing, he'll automatically let go of the web. Spider-Man 2 from 2004 didn't have this issue. You could hold on to your webs all day and night. You could do 100 loops if you had enough inertia. This is because that game had actual physics for its swinging. It's obvious that this swinging system is not physics based. It's just a curated mix of animations, partly guided by you, but mostly guided by the game. Masquerading as a physics simulation. To prove that you play very little role in making your character swing and traverse through the city, all you have to do is see what happens when you do nothing. By holding the right trigger down and only pushing the left thumbstick forward, your character will automatically swing and traverse the whole world all on his own. You don't even have to do a single thing. You could just set the controller up with some rubber bands and walk away, and he'll jump, run, and swing in whatever direction you left him facing. This issue was bad in the first game, and I was hoping they'd fix it this time around, but I think they made it worse. In one single attempt, I was able to have Spider-Man travel from one end of the island all the way to the other on his own. Swinging, jumping, and running through every single obstacle throughout the city that stood in his way. I tried this with the first game again, and I couldn't even do it after five attempts, but now in Spider-Man and two, it can be accomplished after one try. Like I explained on my previous video on swinging in Spider-Man, when you swing from something, you experience the most speed at the bottom of your arch, so letting go there will throw you further. Alternatively, at the peak of your swing, letting go will send you higher. If you never let go, and if there is enough speed, you'll swing in loops. Physics are essential to a Spider-Man game. This is why Spider-Man 2 from 2004 is the gold standard for web swinging physics, because it actually has physics. Insomniac doesn't really rely on physics entirely. They take a more more controlled, animation-heavy approach. While it does clearly use physics to mostly sell the illusion of swinging, it's held back so much by Insomniac's need to cover things up and make everything controlled. Insomniac wants it to look pretty. They want to hide the blemishes
blemishes, the fails, the missteps, and more. But in covering all that up, they defy physics in the process and take away your freedom to do your own creative things. Because the original Spider-Man 2 from 2004 uses real physics and isn't faking it, the webs you swing from are real objects that interact with the world. So when you wrap around an object or building, the web wraps around it too, coiling and shortening in the process. However, 19 years later, in Insomniac's Spider-Man 2, webs phase through buildings as if they don't exist. Animation-heavy traversal can't account for everything, so while it may look clean to see the characters smoothly jumping from animation set to animation set through predefined set pieces, it all falls apart the moment you fall somewhere Insomniac didn't account for, or if you activate an animation at a weird angle. Animation-controlled parkour and swinging may look fantastic, but that doesn't mean it feels fantastic to play. Rigid, controlled animation sets take away from the freedom the player has. Maybe I just want to run near an object on a roof. Maybe I don't want Spider-Man flipping and jumping off every single object just because I'm near it. Some people may enjoy the way it plays when their path is controlled by the game's traversal system, but I just don't. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Euphoria physics is the solution here. With Euphorian physics or AI animation system learning, you can approach any obstacle or situation and the system will naturally react, rather than glitching or animation snapping. Save the animation team the time and effort. Let next generation systems do the heavy work here. It'll look and play better anyways. When swinging near walls in Insomniac Spider-Man 2, you are not allowed to rest against them or slide against them. Instead, he immediately lets go of the web and starts running up the wall. 19 years ago in Spider-Man 2, you could rest against the wall while still holding your web. But now, in Insomniac's world, you have no control, the ability to just do what you want to do. He'll just start running up the wall like he's got somewhere to be. The wall running in this game is ridiculous. The man immediately runs up any wall he sees if you accidentally get him near one. Even if you go from a full-on dive, if he sees a wall in front of him, all his inertia will suddenly disappear and he'll start running upwards. Don't give me the excuse that he's a superhero so this is possible. He doesn't warp reality, he's just extremely powerful. Sure, he should be able to turn and change direction on a dime, but he should at least have an animation or shift to the new direction, rather than magically floating there. Also, he's able to run up buildings at Mach 10 speed, but he can't run across the street at anywhere near this speed. To top it off, did you notice that he can't even run down buildings? He literally only runs left, right, or up. This was in Spider-Man 2 from 2004. You could run in any direction, up, down, left, right, it didn't matter. It wasn't controlled. When swinging near the ground in Insomniac Spider-Man 2, you still levitate over the protected area. This is the only thing they've added an optional fix for in the settings. If you disable swing assist, you can actually hit the ground now. A step in the right direction, but a short step when many fans were hoping for a leap. Also, Spider-Man still magically floats off before his web actually connects to anything at all. He even starts floating before he shot the web. Imagine how cool it would have been to still be falling during that brief moment where your web still hasn't yet connected to anything while you were falling, giving you the momentum and the challenge of navigating the city more realistically. I've seen many people praise the wingsuit in this game. While the idea of bringing the wingsuit into the sequel was a great one, and the design looks great, I feel like its addition, with the way it was implemented, kind of breaks the game a bit. Its implementation is counterintuitive because it detracts from the swinging. In a game about Spider-Man, the primary focus should be the swinging. Swinging should be the fastest, most satisfying, most entertaining mode of traversing, and any additional features should only work to complement it. That's not how Insomnia implemented the wingsuit. The wingsuit shines in a few areas. For instance, it allows you to glide for long distances and reach places further out than swinging could. It also lets you do more tricks and interesting maneuvers. In those ways, the wingsuit is great. It serves a cool purpose but doesn't outdo or outshine the swinging in that context. Unfortunately, due to the distracting looking wind tunnels that litter the map, you can wingsuit ridiculously long stretches with zero effort. On most difficulties, the game forces you to stay within the tunnel, keeping you on track. It it also moves you through the route much faster than web swinging ever could, making web swinging obsolete. What's worse, you can fly around the entire map without ever shooting a single web, and you can fly that route much faster than swinging it. The wingsuit should only allow you to glide. If it did, there would be absolutely no problem with it. It really shouldn't allow you to just fly. 
The game is called Marvel Spider-Man 2, not DC's Superman. This further proves that this is 100% an arcade level product. They were not aiming for realism or real physics in any way. And I'm not saying that everything needs to be completely grounded in reality. Things should just not be ridiculous and not break the game. This does both of these things. Even ignoring those things, I'm still confused at how people could think the handling of the wingsuit is good. It's clunky. It doesn't feel natural, it just feels bad. Just Cause 3 did it better 8 years ago. Just Cause had weight to the flight, and momentum could reach peaks before falling back to the earth. He also moved smoothly. It wasn't jittery. Spider-Man 2 is the opposite. It's very mechanical and rigid. You can clearly feel that the game is forcing you forward, and you are barely aiming it otherwise. I don't want to lie and pretend that I liked the wingsuit just because so many others have said it's good. I think it takes away from the swinging, and I think it destroys the immersion. The isolation that being stuck on Manhattan Island gives you, because now we can just fly across the water in our wingsuit or slide on it like we're surfers infinitely. In Spider-Man 2 from 2004, you had to hitch a ride on the helicopters to make it to the Statue of Liberty, but now you could just web surf your way there. Because of these things, the game now feels broken. It feels like it's in perfect shape for an arcade game, but for a more mature, story-driven game, some of these features don't match the tone the story mode sets. Innovation is great, these ideas are great, wingsuit and water slide they're just poorly implemented in my opinion. Maybe they could have made it so you only glide, removing the perpetual motion issue that it currently has. Maybe they could have made it only accessible with certain suits or upgrades, using a slot that would otherwise be taken up by another gameplay related advantage. To just hand it out, making it a base trait, takes away from the web swinging. Spider-Man swings much faster this time around. The last game always felt way too slow. As this side-by-side -side shows, the differences in speeds are noticeable. This is mostly a tech upgrade thanks to solid-state drives with the power of the PS5. The fast travel is basically instantaneous, so the Insomniac team had a lot to work with when deciding the speed of the swinging. I think they nailed the swinging speed this time around. But as we said before, in many cases, the rapidness of the wingsuit's traversal through the wind tunnels overshadows the swinging speed, rendering it completely redundant in wind tunnel areas. One of the most commendable decisions in the changes made for this next installment is the inclusion of the option to disable wing assist. This option gives us the chance to see the swinging physics in a less doctored form. Rather than protecting you, the game removes the protection barrier around surfaces, allowing you to bottom out and hit the ground if you didn't swing above it naturally. While they did add the ability to turn down some assists, they didn't really rework the swinging like they could have. Put it this way, if the first game was able to introduce an entirely new city and all new gameplay, fighting, and swinging mechanics, along with its entire story. The second game, basically recycling all these previous assets and work, should be able to introduce so much more, like an alternate swinging mechanic, a more hardcore one. Swinging could be challenging, like an actual puzzle to navigate through the city, but even with all the assists off in Spider-Man 2, no such challenge exists. Also, despite the reasoning they gave last time for not having fall damage, it being that Spider-Man was so experienced that he didn't get hurt anymore, they included fall damage in this game, accessible through the gameplay settings. It's great that they included it. It's perfect for people looking for more of a challenge when swinging, more realism. Although this video is about the swinging physics, it's also about the mechanics involved in controlling Spider-Man. This includes the wall crawling. It's apparent that no noticeable changes or improvements have been included to the wall crawling. It's still difficult to climb where you want. Most of the time, you can't even transition from wall to ceiling, unless it's in a story mode area where they playtested it because it had to work. But in free mode, wall crawling is essentially unusable. He doesn't even climb over or around minor obstacles. He never seems to be able to transfer around corners. This is not a an issue I've noticed in any other Spider-Man games. This is exclusive to how Insomniac made these climbing mechanics function. In regards to the swinging physics, nothing has really changed. They resold the same package with a few new gimmicks like slightly faster speeds, the wingsuit, and the swing assist settings. Myself and many others were hoping they were going to incorporate an advanced swinging option that completely changed the way we swing. It's unfortunate that they stuck to the arcade style, but it was the safest bet for them. It was the most accessible option for the majority. I wish they added more features like the slingshot launch move or the corner tether move. These moves make swinging more interesting and open up new possibilities for you when you're free swinging. They could have let you push a button to switch into a forced upside down swinging mode. Maybe we could have web surfed off of cars and 
boats in free roam, like you can in some of the random events. Dual web anchors would have been awesome like they had in Spider-Man 2 from 2004. Or we could have web climbed while swinging like you can in Ultimate Spider-Man. Hanging from street lights and spinning on them faster and faster to launch was awesome in 2004 and would have been great to see here. We could have had web parachutes to slow down our fall if we're about to hit the ground too hard and die. They could have added web shooter cartridges where you need refills. Then you'd be able to utilize a nerfed version of the wingsuit to make your way to a web shooter stash to refill. The ability to do tricks with vehicles on the ground would have been cool, like how in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2 movie, he swung between the truck and trailer, or how he would swing between taxis. Instead of forcing Peter to let go of his web every single time he touches a wall or the ground, they could have done what Spider-Man 2 in 2004 did, and let him run along the ground or wall while still holding the web. Another cool trick that could have been included would be the ability to run his hand along the ground while he swings super low. You should also be able to run down buildings, since the character seems to run on every single wall he sees anyway, even when you don't want him to. The game should have been so trick focused. So much more focus could have been put into redesigning and rethinking the swinging, making it a fresh and major component of the game. All in all, Insomniac played it safe this time around. In their minds, they left it untouched because they didn't want to fix what wasn't broken. But I think it is broken. I think the player should decide what direction they want to swing. I think the player should decide when to let go of their web. Web swinging should not be overshadowed by the ability to just fly around the map. Webs should act like physical objects. They shouldn't phase through buildings like we're playing an indie game. Swinging is one of the most fundamental things you absolutely have to get right when you're making a Spider-Man game. I think it would have been so much cooler if they implemented an advanced swinging mode, featuring better physics and less handicaps. Insomniac Games needs to implement proper physics next time around. They can create the new gold standard of swinging in Spider-Man games, if only they'd choose to. Insomniac is in charge of the Spider-Man IP for now. They have the sales, they have the assets, and the manpower to make proper swinging a reality. And with all of that influence, that status and power, comes great responsibility. Remember, the battlefield of Enlisted beckons on your platform of choice. Enlist using the link in my description to secure your free bonus pack. Immerse yourself in the gritty soldier combat that only Enlisted can deliver.